The untroubled virgin beauty of the land reminds the visitor of the similar marvel experienced by the first Spanish explorers when they knelt to kiss the soil of the New World more than 500 years ago. This natural tranquility masks a more troubled human landscape, one in which cultures have risen and fallen, marked by conflict, slavery, and suffering. Spanish colonization introduced the gospel and European civilization, but also plundered and destroyed the native cultures, initially through greed, but finally through the introduction of European disease, which, since 1532, has killed over 75% of the Indian population. Modern history has been no more forgiving. Peru is still one of the poorest countries in Latin America. With a total population of around 26 million, 75% live in poverty. I believe one of the circumstances that Peru is living today, and not only Peru, but the whole continent, is lack of political maturity. One has to add to this the corruption which permeates everything and which is an obstacle to the country's development. This keeps the country poor. A typical wage is about $6 a day, forcing over 1.2 million children to work. Illiteracy is rampant, and epidemics of tuberculosis and cholera are still widespread. Lima, the capital, once known as the City of Kings. With over 12 million inhabitants, it shelters almost half the total population of Peru. The palatial walls of Lima's elite witness to the fact that 80% of the wealth is held by 2% of the population. More than half of Lima's inhabitants live below the poverty line, not in the center, but clustered in housing settlements located in desert regions often up to 20 kilometers away. These new villages are a legacy of the Fujimori era, when, in order to gain votes for re-election, he encouraged vast segments of the underprivileged to move to hastily constructed housing based on promises of better living conditions. The ploy gained 10,000 last-minute votes, ensuring victory. Years later, there is still no running water, no electricity, and no sanitation. The corruption and political turmoil, failing infrastructures, drug trade, and psychological wounds inflicted by the Shining Path terrorist group have all left deep scars on the Peruvian people. Recent years have seen an imposition of order and stability. However, the tattered social and economic heritage has provoked, among other things, an exodus of over two million young Peruvians to neighboring countries in search of better living conditions. The only stable element, and often a political and social reference point for Peruvians, is the Catholic Church. Evidence of Peru's importance to the Church dates back to 1541, when the Diocese of Lima became the metropole for the entire Latin American Pacific coast from Nicaragua to the extreme south of Patagonia. Although responsible for dark chapters, throughout Peru's often tragic history, the Catholic Church continues to be a lone source of care for the population, offering hope and struggling for the dignity of the individual.
Recognition of this spiritual and social bond is reflected through the continuing adherence to the Catholic faith. 93% of Peruvians are registered as Catholic. Public rituals and celebrations are still integral to contemporary Peruvian life, such as this, the honoring of Señor de los Milagros in October, which draws millions to the streets and brings the city to a standstill in a joyful celebration of faith. Popular faith is still the basic conviction that, despite the heart conditions and acute poverty, God loves you and suffers with you and will not abandon his people. Despite Peru's Catholic heritage, Peru is still considered a land of mission. Approximately two-thirds of the Peruvian clergy are foreigners. However, the need for local priests is crucial, particularly in rural areas, where the crisis of vocations is deepened by the vast distances between parishes. Sunday Mass in remote villages is often replaced by prayers and a liturgy of the word led by a local catechist. Latin America. Paradoxically, Latin America is one of the areas, one of the continents, which shares proportionately the least number of priests per Catholic population. Some 90% of the people is Catholic, but there are hardly enough priests to serve them. The Peruvian Episcopate is aware of this need and recent efforts have resulted in an increase of a Peruvian priesthood. But now the Lord is blessing us with many vocations. And thanks be to God, I am going this year to have the 50th ordination in the diocese over these 21 years. 50 ordinations in 21 years supposes more than two per year. For Peru, this is a lot. The diocese is changing from being an area without priests to being one of the areas best served by priests in the country. Now, we have only 10,000 Catholics per priest. I understand that these numbers are enormous for Europe, but there are areas in Peru where there are more than 30,000 Catholics per priest. The desire of these young men to serve God is often hindered by the lack of local resources and infrastructure. The annual cost to educate a single seminarian is often more than the annual income of the family. The church, also struggling in poverty, is in no better position to undertake these costs. Rather than lose these vocations, the local church looks to the universal church for financial support and solidarity. According to statistics in the last years, some 70% of priests come from the lower social strata. And the same regarded the present-day seminarians who do not have the means to pay for their formation. Around 30 to 40% of the budget of a seminary relating to transportation, food and books is covered by the contributions of aid to the church in need with the aim of helping those poor seminarians. De estratos pobres, fundamentalmente. In view of the lack of priests, the construction of churches at first glance might appear contradictory. However, the physical presence of a church is not only an important sign of hope